Final Fantasy IV The Complete Collection is the latest incarnation of the Final Fantasy IV game for the PSP. Over the years, Square has done a few re-releases of Final Fantasy IV on the PlayStation, Wonderswan, and Game Boy Advance, as well as the DS, but this incarnation is my favorite. Unlike the DS version, this PSP release sports a dramatic improvement to the graphics while keeping them 2D, and the English localization script is, for the first time, completely uncensored. I will say though that the graphical update kind of makes the game greatly resemble a stereotypical RPG Maker game. And to be honest, I don't know if that is a testament to the RPG Maker default graphics, or if it's a sign the developers didn't go far enough with the graphical enhancement. I'll let you decide. Final Fantasy IV is a game that is dear to my heart, as it was the second Final Fantasy game I played as a child, after Mystic Quest. The story follows the Dark Knight Cecil, who has been tasked with invading other kingdoms to locate elemental crystals for the King of Baron. Cecil wrestles with the morality of his actions through the early parts of the story, giving him more depth than gamers were used to when this game was first released. By today's standards, Final Fantasy IV may seem to rush the character development a little, but I still think it's one of the truly great computer RPG storylines. Any incarnation of the game is worth a play, and if you have never done so, you are missing out on a timeless classic. The game also has a very interesting history of its own, which deserves its own separate video dedicated just to that fact. I'll have to touch upon Final Fantasy IV in the future when I do my expose on the whole Final Fantasy series. Now in addition to Final Fantasy IV and After Years, Final Fantasy IV also has Interlude, which is a 12 hour game that takes place between the events of Final Fantasy IV and the After Years. But let's be honest here, what game does everyone buying this really want to play? For me, it's the After Years. After Years was released first for mobile phones and then on the WiiWare network as nine downloadable episodes, but I never played them on the Wii, so this PSP re-release is my first experience with the game. After Years utilizes the same combat system as Final Fantasy IV, the active time battle system with characters who have dedicated character classes. However, it does add two new subsystems, Band Moves and Moon Phases. Band Moves are special combo attacks certain characters can pull off that cost both characters their turn. The band moves somewhat remind me of the combo attacks in Chrono Trigger, and I think it's a nice addition to the gameplay, as it gives more tactical variety to the characters. Additionally, the game has incorporated a concept of moon phases, not unlike that used in the Mega Ten series. During different phases of the moon, combat parameters change. For example, a full moon will half the damage a character deals with weapons, but double the damage of black magic spells. Stronger enemies also tend to appear during a full moon phase. Lastly, the number of special abilities each character has access to has been increased. After Years is divided into chapters that follow the stories of different characters in the storyline of Final Fantasy IV. Theodore, the son of Cecil and Rosa, kicks off the game, but eventually you have chapters devoted to characters such as Cain, Porm, Edward, and even Golbez. There is a total of nine of these chapters, and there is a certain amount of crossover between their stories as you see the same events from the perspective of different characters. After Years is a mostly enjoyable experience for those of us who are fans of the old school Squaresoft games, but it does have a few rough edges. For example, the game just doesn't start as greatly as it could. The game does a pretty good job of demonstrating the new systems, especially band moves, by having Biggs and Wedge demonstrate them for you, but then they ditch Theodore and he's left to explore the first dungeon alone. I was left puzzled by this turn of events. In a game whose most noble gameplay mechanic is a team attack system, why the hell is our main character roaming a dungeon by himself? and therefore completely unable to utilize that new and interesting gameplay mechanic. I had to push myself through the first 20 minutes of the game to get to the considerably more enjoyable portions that came after, and that's just not acceptable in 2011. There is no longer any excuse for a game to have a boring portion, especially not with the number of amazing titles Square has produced. Even Final Fantasy IV initially paired Cecil with Kane, both of whom had interesting abilities to use right off the bat. That Theodore's first chapter is such a snooze fest is complete bullshit. Later, as I cleared each chapter, I found this formula continued. Every chapter has sections where you play a solo character and therefore cannot utilize the bands. I found myself wanting to rush through the first nine chapters so I could get to the final chapter where the characters actually start parting with each other on a reliable basis. Another thing that frustrated me was how random battles were implemented. Most computer RPGs of yesteryear have the computer generate a random number every time the character takes a step. If the random is higher or lower than the target number, then you enter a battle. As an example, let's suppose the number is 50. If the number generated is lower than 50, that means your character will enter a battle. The problem with this kind of design is that it is possible the first step your character takes after leaving a battle will trigger another battle, which tends to be very frustrating for the player. 
I'm not sure what the target number is in After Years, but I repeatedly got into battles every three to six steps. Most modern computer RPGs that use random battles protect against this sort of thing by not rolling the random generator until after the player has made at least 10 or 20 steps. But After Years clearly has no such mechanic to protect the player's sanity. This is a negative strike because it would have taken about a minute to insert that code, and the game would be the better for it. And there is no reason for all the constant battling either. I escaped from the overwhelming majority of battles, and didn't grind, and I was able to clear all the bosses the first time around. I should also note that each chapter contains about 4 hours of gameplay, and were originally sold for 300 to 800 Wii points, so I kind of suspect the After Years was created as a money grab tactic. This wouldn't bother me so much except that After Years has these gameplay imperfections that should have been polished out of it during the playtest phase. Despite these criticisms, I believe the story of the game is almost as good as the story of Final Fantasy IV, but I don't want to release any spoilers, so I'll refrain from explaining why. All I will say is that if you are a fan of Final Fantasy IV, you should have a blast with this game, as After Years further develops the characters while offering minor improvements to the battle system with the additions of the moon phases and the band moves and additional character abilities. I highly recommend you pick up this complete collection and enjoy this timeless classic as well as its two sequel games.